special edition of Celtics Weekly. It'll begin at 7 o'clock on the 15th for one hour, and during that show, I'll have a chance to talk in depth, one-on-one -on -one with Larry Bird. And then at 8 o'clock, we will replay Larry's original retirement press conference. Whatever you're here from now to next year or the next year's whatever, I will not be coming back to play basketball. Uh, I discussed it with my doctors and they assured me that this is the right decision and it's something that had to be done. It was very emotional. Uh, I knew it was very emotional for Larry. It was a very, very long evening and you tried just to hold in your emotions to get through the evening. Uh, and I thought it went well. Uh, I had reflections on when number 10 went up in the rafters. Uh, but I was very, very proud of the fact that uh, Larry went out very, very dignified and uh, he was a great player for him. You know that uh, club, the 81 team, we were so close and uh, a lot of us have gone our own ways and some of them I hadn't seen for about eight years and it's, uh, it's it's just great to get with everybody and be able to spend four or five days up here. And, uh, you know, this is uh, an area that uh, I had a whole lot of fun, a lot of great memories. But I always tease Bird. I said, you know, Larry, I got the last Kentucky scholarship and you were supposed to go there. I was drafted before you uh, because you were a junior eligible. And then I started in front of you, but he's made a whole lot more money than I ever made. <laughs> Well, I live in Lexington, Kentucky right now. I just bought a home in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm in business back there in the allergy relief products. Uh, I've got retail stores in Louisville, Lexington, Florence, Kentucky, and Clay City, Kentucky. So I'm just back there in the bluegrass uh, working. <laughs> I think to the tribute that they put on, uh, I don't know anything else that could surpass it. You know, for a person getting their number retired, this, is, this was the ultimate. Uh, two and a half hours of listening to people tell stories that what people really came to hear about Larry. Uh, I think it was great, it really was. I did have a great time. I mean, I've known Larry for a long time and anything I could do that'll hopefully pay him back for all the time he's given me on the court um, is only minimal. I'm a little bit dumbfounded by it. Uh, it was interesting uh, as they had both Irvin and Larry up there to realize you've watched two of the greatest players that ever play the game. I almost went into tears and then when it was over, I'm, I'm a little more emotional than Larry. I did. I cried because it's officially over. But uh, he was uh, duly recognized uh, by the organization. And uh, when it's all said and done, uh, the Olympics duly recognized him as one of the greatest players to ever play. As a wordsmith for a guy who came in the league who barely talked when he got here. I think everybody who was a part of this tonight and through other media will understand that uh, Larry truly appreciated being a part of the organization and felt that the fans were the thing that catapulted him to be one of the greatest players to ever play. There's no, there's very little promotion with this organization. There's no gimmicks, there's no tricks, there's no dancing girls. Although I did see a dog in Frisbee show here last weekend. <laughs> But to have everybody come and sit down and listen to people talk and have the energy level, the excitement level as high as it was, just an, an incredible moment. And give, give the operations department of the Boston Celtics, Todd Rosenzweig and uh, Jeff Twist and Dave Zaccaro uh, uh, an incredible kudo here because they did it tonight. I'm just really glad that Red Auerbach took that call when I called him at the end of the 85 season. And I, I knew that I had to get to a, a, a championship season be, or championship team because I was unable to do it myself. Uh, and so I looked around and I said, I got to get on Larry Bird's back. And I tell you, I, I'm the one who's responsible for that back going bad. I, I, I'm a heavy load. <laughs> I hear people talking about, you know, God, I wish Magic and Larry would come back and play again. Those people are greedy. There's nothing left there. Just let them be themselves, let them move on to the next step, which will be even greater in my opinion, because that's just the type of people they are. Uh, two competitors who are crazy about winning, who knew nothing else but winning. And, um, but then on the other side of that, you got two guys who are friends, who share everything, you know. Uh, Connor, uh, Diana, we, we, we talk about family and we, we talk about how mom and, and how's EJ and, and then he tell me about his 
his new daughter he just adopted and we 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 talk about things other people don't get to talk about with Larry because we're friends see and like tonight he said okay you got to ride over with me